Hi, Abraham. <laughs> um, I just would really like Abraham's perspective on a question that's been bothering, or I've wanted the answer to for a long time. There's a lot of different books written and scientists talking about the world is a universe, uh, the, everything is a hologram, that nothing is really, matter is not real, that everything out there is just a projection of our consciousness. Um, and I'm just wondering what Abraham's take is on that, is that, that matter not being real. Well, it's really interesting to stand in the middle of a world that you have interpreted as matter and then try to figure out whether it is or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what they're getting at is something that we've discussed softly a few times here today when we say what you see is an interpretation of vibration. What you hear is an interpretation of vibration. Mm -hmm. So when your dog hears or smells something that you can't hear or don't want to smell, <laughs> is it real or is your dog delusional? <laughs> well, you would say, well, I can accept because my dog shows me consistent enough behavior. I believe my dog hears and smells those things. So I'm not willing to say they don't exist. They're just not really a part of my reality because I'm not interpreting them as my dog is. So, so what you're asking all of us to do, and we're happy to do it, is just take that thought further still. The, the thing that makes this discussion of matter and reality, Esther loves it because she loves knowing that her dreamscape is a creation too. And she really loves the continuity of what she's calling her real life. And she accepts that she's the creator of both of them, but she loves the continuity of her real life. She likes going to bed in Philadelphia and waking up in Philadelphia. She likes, mm -hmm. she likes that while in her dreams, it's not always that way. Right. So when you think about your interaction with so many others and you agree with each other on your interpretations, it creates a more stable reality right. that you use as your bouncing off place for expansion. Mm -hmm. Now we said earlier today, we'll, we'll, we'll make it a clear statement. You could be walking down the street, the same street in the same city, several of you actually living many different worlds because what you see has far more to do with your vibrational stance than what you're actually seeing. Okay. You are seeing only a fraction of what's available and what you see is shown to you on the basis of the vibration that you've got going on. In other words, your reality is shown to you through the lens of your chronic practiced vibration. That makes sense to you, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And so it's like Esther lost her gold pen and searched the whole house, turned every handbag upside down, looked and looked and looked and looked for it and could not find it and pronounced it gone. And months later, looking for something else, reached into the handbag she had searched and turned inside out a dozen times and came out with her pen. Mm -hmm. It was there all along, but you can't find something that's lost. Because when you believe it's lost, you are vibrationally unable to see it or perceive it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what they're saying is an accurate description of perception. It's like moving through this building right now mm -hmm. are television signals, radio signals, telephone signals, all kinds of signals CB radio signals all kinds of frequencies moving through here and you are not bothered by most of them unless you're very sensitive to energy mm -hmm. because you don't have your tuner tuned to the frequency of them and so it's really about that it's about reality 
is as you interpret it to be through the filters of your own vibrational receivers right so so there really is no matter that it's all interpretation of our own well you see we won't go that far because okay. we won't we will not say there is not matter because you all have deciphered it you have you've had enough exposure to enough agreed upon experience okay. that you have come to some objective conclusions about your common experiences okay. and you've labeled it matter okay. and that matters mm -hmm. I gotcha I gotcha okay we always enjoy discussions like this because when you approach life in this way then it makes this fairy tale of a vortex we're pointing out a reality that's easier to accept in other words mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. if you if as you it's not a fairy tale it is a reality but you can't see it in other words you can't see, there's not matter that you can interpret yet there but it will flesh out into the full matter mm -hmm. as you get into the vortex and allow the vibration of it to be more consistent within you mm -hmm. I get that thank you all thank you have you to do much. all you have to do is we were visiting with a woman one day and we said let's talk about blue glass let's talk about butterflies let's talk about feathers and she wasn't really interested in doing so but we we kept it going anyway and then it was on the telephone and then uh, she went on her way and Esther and Jerry went into La Jolla they were in California at the time and in the next two hours Esther had an emphatic blue glass butterfly and feather experience because they were subjects that we helped activate in Esther's vibration and then the universe brought them into manifestational view for her they got out of the car on their way to George's to go to the restaurant and Esther had an urge a compelling urge an urge that wild horses could not keep her from even Jerry who wanted to go to George's couldn't keep her Esther said let's go in this go, let's go in this shop and before Jerry could protest Esther disappeared into the shop he had no choice if he wanted to be with her other than to follow her he followed her back into the shop and there was a wall of blue glass the likes of which she had never seen but she didn't mm -hmm. make the connection she didn't associate the blue glass with the conversation that we had just had okay. then they had lunch and after lunch they walked down to the cove where it is the most beautiful uh, water and as they're walking down across a lawn a flurry of butterflies so intense they had to stop talking for a while to not eat them surrounded them and Esther still did not associate the activation of butterflies and blue glass with what was manifesting in her experience mm -hmm. and then a little boy came running up to her a little boy who doesn't know her and that she did not know but was coming right to her as if he knew her holding a feather for her <laughs> and as yeah. Esther reached down and took the feather mm -hmm. from this little boy she realized that all that had happened is that by some soft suggestion we had activated three subjects to which she had zero resistance and the universe brought them all mm -hmm. into her manifested experience immediately now most of you say well Abraham but the feather already was matter and the and the blue glass was already matter somebody had already created it and trucked it to that store and put it on that shelf and so mm -hmm. I can see how we could be uh, scavenger hunters uh, that we could activate in our vibration and that then the universe could say oh here's the treasure over here and here's the treasure over here but I can't quite make the leap that I created it to begin with and we say that's because you haven't seen the vortex you didn't see the vortex before you were born you didn't see the vortex the generation before that or the generation before that in other words these things have been brewing in vortices for a very long time and they have become matter that you are then born into and it's a consciousness that you are born able to interpret that's why we were talking about the difference between whether it is nurture or nature it really doesn't make any difference because it's all part of the mix you see 
and so here you are you were born into it you were born with the ability to decipher vibration into matter let's just accept that there is a reality that is the basis of what's coming next not just the basis of what's coming more in your physical universe but what's coming at the universe in large in other words we are together creating a vortex of creation that is the future generations of everything that you know to be and now let's stand back in your physical form and let's say "Ooh, that's so big how do I fit into this and you say well it's pretty clear I came from non-physical energy with the ability to decipher energy into matter and I will not be one who proclaims it unreal it's real it's the basis of the leading edge that is spawning so much more people who are wanting you to understand that that it is that it isn't a reality are those like us that want you to accept that there is a vibrational reality that is every big as vib vivid and big and and if you can make that jump and if there was ever a conversation that would make it easy to do it would be what's led up to this conversation and this conversation that we're having right now in other words we want you to understand that what you are calling reality and what we are calling vibrational reality are equally vivid to us are equally real to us and because we do not need to decipher and you don't either in terms of your physical senses you could feel the emotion of this vortex and in the moment that you are willing to feel the emotion of this vortex and let the reality of the emotion of the vortex the emotion of feeling elation the emotion of feeling love the emotion of feeling worthy the emotion of feeling certain the emotion of feeling stable the emotion of feeling financially secure the emotion of being in love the emotion of loving the emotion of being loved the emotion of satisfaction the emotion of well-being the emotion of exhilaration the emotion of happiness the emotion of joy the emotion of appreciation the emotion of well-being the emotion of stability the emotion of vitality the emotion of well-being the emotion of appreciation the emotion of joy the emotion of the vortex as I am willing to train myself into the emotion of it till that is the vibration that I practice then everything that I've tossed over there that I imagined that I dreamed into being must show itself to me in the form of matter in the term of what I call material and it is not a big leap it's not different from it already being there on a shelf in La Jolla and inspiration just guiding you to it you see okay. if this time space reality has the wherewithal to inspire you to put something into the vortex vortex this time space reality has the ability to manifest it into what you call matter got it thank you thank you very much